That's it. That takes us out of it. And my thanks there to my colleagues at RTE Nationwide uh, down in Cork for allowing me to use that uh, on RTE One. Of course, Nationwide goes out every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Friday at 7 o'clock in the evening. It's the success story, really, of RTE Television at the moment because uh, in, a, in a sea, in a jungle of bad news and negativity, Nationwide is constantly bringing you the good stories. And uh, as I say, you can catch it Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 o'clock in the evening. And I need to tell you just that John Sherlock, the sculptor we saw there, one of Ireland's greatest scu living sculptors at the moment, John is in studio with me tomorrow and we'll be looking at a, a wider expanse of his work, a general uh, catalogue of his work in progress at the moment. So that's tomorrow on the programme, John Sherlock Sculptor. With me now, uh, uh, George Kingsnorth from the Southern Regional College. George is the coordinator of the HND Creative Media Production course. You're very welcome. Thank you very How much. How are you? Doing good. Yeah. You've, you've now, the place over there, it's, a bit, it's gone from being the tech through the institute, and it's now the Southern Regional College. Southern Regional College. You're great people. You're you're you've come up mightily in the world, and good things <laughs> are happening. How's media there at the moment? Media is doing good. Um, we, we've got um, courses in Newry, Banbridge, Armar, uh, Lurgan. Wow. Because when it started, I remember Jerry Doherty starting it maybe 20, 15 years ago now, uh -huh. uh, and I was with him there. We I had just left the BBC at the time, and. Uh, it was rather more modest. It was BTEC media studies, and we we did we did fine. But the the notion of extending it to Banbridge and to Armagh and to Lurgan, wow, that was quite something. I tell you. Well, I think I think it's um it's just historically, there were several colleges. Yeah. Um, and with the merger, I think it was two thousand and seven. Then, you know, we we married up with the, it the colleges yeah. in uh, Banbridge and Lurgan. So it's mm. not that. They've grown out of Newry. It's just that they were there already. Yeah, it's just and the merger has brought everybody together. Thing, yeah. So the course that you're uh, coordinating at the moment, uh, what 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 is the emphasis? What is the the drive within the course? What are you creating? Um, well, our course is is uh, a lot of moving image, radio, and animation, um, mm. with the other bits and pieces that you need to understand how to incorporate some of that video or media into internet, that kind of stuff. But what we're doing is we're trying to prepare students for working in uh, television, animation, radio, that kind of area. Yeah. Um, but we're also, I mean, when we interview students, we, we try to find out what their passion is, mm -hmm. um, what their driving force is, because media is one of those areas where if you don't have a driving force, if you don't have a passion, mm. you can very easily sort of fall away from the whole thing. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of effort to... Well, I think, I think you're right. I think the passion carries you through the lean times Absolutely. you know and there are lean times let's yeah. be honest about it. you might have to wait for uh, months years to get a job for goodness sake but the passion for it allows you to continue on and to do things yeah. and that that's that's a huge benefit to people well what we try to do is one um, you also have to learn a living so mm -hmm. you've got to find ways to generate income through mm -hmm. through that passion through that media so we're trying to train them in, in business as well Mm -hmm. um, but we also encourage them to think about what their main interests are so they actually carry on doing that mm -hmm. and, and so they can be self-motivating. I mm -hmm. think that's very important. Without that self-motivation, mm -hmm. I, I think you'd drive very quickly. So you've yeah. got to have two things running, one that generates the income, mm -hmm. the other that allows you to become an expert mm -hmm. in your field. Mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's very important. And George, have you, uh, are you finding you, uh, that passion and that commitment uh, and that drive is it naturally populating the people you've got over there who come to you? Because with younger people, it's, it's, it's a quality that can be a bit elusive at times. Um, I think w w what we tend to get is students who have gone through a kind of schooling system that's told them what to do. Um, and what we have to do as, as lecturers is to untap that resource that is there that they mm. didn't really know was there. And we, we've actually found that over the years that we have People have found their feet, they've found their way, they've found they can make their own choices, they can do what they would like to do, and it's, it, it's possible. And I think that it's, it's, it's getting that seed to grow mm. within them. Um, um, what I've discovered in the last 10 years of working with SRC is that you, you suddenly find the students going off and 
uh, they're getting great grades when they go through the course. Mm -hmm. They go on to do degree courses and get two ones or, or, or excel at the HND course that we yes. run. And then they get work. And yeah. they're actually going out there and finding what they want to do mm. and making sure that they can be successful. It's not always about money that, you know, mm. as you say, there's, there are lean times. Oh you've yeah. got to work mm. through those <coughs> lean times. Yeah. But you've also got to believe mm. in yourself. Yeah. And I think that is something that we're trying to encourage and nurture within the students. So, especially on the HND mm. and the National Diplomas or the Extended Diplomas Level mm. 3 that we do now. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's just igniting that flame mm. within them. And you it does, does work. There's an M coming to me, and it should be on your hall, hall, your alumni hall of fame, and it's Shane McGee. And Shane came to me and to Jerry over there 15, I don't know, maybe it's longer now ago, when we founded the BTEC course. And Shane was a reject yeah. from the schools he was in. And he was quite mad in his own way. He dressed eccentrically, he spoke eccentrically, he... Uh, he had a total eccentricity of demeanour, mm -hmm. uh, but was a warm lad who wanted a chance. Yes. Now, when he was given the chance, that lad has grown into a filmmaker in London and in France and has been around the world uh, yeah. Yeah. through his eccentric eccentricity and his passion. And I know exactly what you're saying because the lads and the girls who who spread the wings and take the chance Absolutely. and Absolutely. feel the fear, yeah. they're, yeah. they're going to do okay. You're on the edge all the time. <coughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, we, we've had... Even at 70, you remain on the oh, edge. Absolutely. I tell you, absolutely. that's where I am today, yeah. you know, which is good. We have, uh, in this last year, we've got one student that's gone off to the National Film School wow. in Beaconfield because, mm. again, they believed. Mm. They believed that they had what it took to, to go off and do, um, you know, follow their passions, follow their mm. dreams. Uh, uh, the, the kind of... In my day, you, you remember this too, well, maybe not to the same extent, but I used to come back from a story uh, and go into the BBC with my, with my film from the 16mm camera, and it first of all went down to the laboratory to be processed, then minutes. dried, <laughs> then it was done, and then it was brought back up to the Steenbeck, and Absolutely. Ray Allen was there yep. sitting in the, in the editing room, and he would put it on the Steenbeck, and it was cut with a blade and stuck together. Yep. And I could never get my head around any of that. I was always the word, and all my colleagues were the words people, and Ray and his colleagues, they were the technical people who knew how to do these yeah. things. But is it true to say that today over at SRC, you're amalgamating the technical and the editorial? Um, yes, I think so. I mean, I started off in film. I, I, I went to art school. I didn't think I was a writer. I didn't think I was a storyteller. But through the craft of editing film and the juxtaposition of one shot against another, yeah. I began to learn to write. I also found, even in the early days, I, I started the BBC in 1984, how much you learnt through that storytelling process. That I mean, I, I, I was involved in some of the television programmes to do with education and yes. Channel One yeah. back, back in those days. Um, and I, my, my passion for education actually came through the editing process because we would have three to five weeks working on a story mm. and you became an expert in that story. You learnt so much through the experience mm. of other people communicating and telling their stories. And that really is, is why... I've kind of moved into education because mm -hmm. I find that, you know, that storytelling process that I learned through, mm -hmm. I mean, I think I've worked on over 200 documentaries, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you, you just get this passion. That's, mm -hmm. again, where my passion comes passion. from. But I think it's hugely important uh, that you have, you're bringing real life, and that's the joy of SRC. You have people like uh, George over there who have real life experience. You're not coming to them out of a textbook. You're coming it from the Citadel uh, from the anvil of of hard deadline meeting criteria, you must do it. Absolutely. You don't have the option to say, oh, I've got writer's block, I can't possibly no, do no. that. You, you do you, it. You've, you've got a deadline, you've got to meet something, yeah. you've got to do something. I mean, I think media is just one aspect of, of what we have to do if you're working in the media. You've, you've, got, to, you've got to want to learn, mm -hmm. and you've got to want to learn about different subject matters. So, mm -hmm. you know, because ordinary people aren't, aren't filmmakers, mm. but they all have a story to tell. Yeah. They all have a history. Um, about 14 years ago, we made a film called Drum and Tea Through the Ages. Wow. Um, and, and it incorporated the history of Drum and Tea. Mm. You had the Kalevi film on the we last had week. I discovered that. Oh, no. <laughs> that was on a shelf for dumping within Absolutely. the BBC. Because Henry Devlin, God rest him, had given it to, had given it to, the, uh, to the BBC 
uh, in the hope that they would use it. Yeah. And it was there, and it was there, and it was there. It wasn't going anywhere. It got knocked from post to pillar. The guy who was supposed to do it was moved somewhere else. Absolutely. It lay on the shelf gathering Absolutely. dust. And then there was the terrible bonfires one day of the, vi of the vanities in the yard at BBC Broadcasting House. It was around about the time of the redoing of the newsroom and all yes, of that. Yeah. So many, so much good stuff. Some of it went, Dan yeah. Gilbert stuff from Radio Ulster went to the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it got lost. But then that's, that course, the BBC then start looking at what other resources there were. And yes. it was the general public that then had their eight millimeter films, yes. the 16 millimeter yeah. film. That all then got telecined. Yeah. And uh, I forget the guy's name that sort of put it all together, but they actually I made those half hour David, programs. David, 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 Dillon. David Dillon was the David, guy. David Dillon. We both remember him yeah. so well. Yeah. And it was David was the producer of the, the Kalevi documentary up at Clog. Right. And uh, it, ah, he was a wonderful, he died yeah. far too early. Absolutely. He was a lovely, lovely man. Well, there's lots of characters in there that taught me so much. Uh, Tony McCauley, who Tony, used to come down here. God rest him. You know, I worked He's on gone. loads of his, he, yeah. he did a, a UTV series with Tommy Sands. Yes. Um, yeah. And I had the joy of being able to edit those programs. Yes, yes. Um, and the style of filmmaking that, that Tony had was very minimalistic. Yes. Um, yeah. you, would, you, would, you would literally, I mean, lo lots of filmmakers would have like a 10 to 1 cutting ratio. Yeah. So if you need five minutes, they'd shoot yeah. 50. Oh, my God. Tony would have six minutes. Yeah. And you got a wonderful story yeah. out of his films. Yeah. So he, he taught me so much about, uh, but having a passion for, for the people in the yeah. area, uh, he, he told me once he was jealous that I, I, I was living down here in Drummond Tea. <laughs> you know? um, so, I, so I've got fond memories of yeah. what, what I learned from absolutely. working with the likes of Tony McCauley. Absolutely, absolutely. But the thi you see, the thing is, and uh, I think it's, it's demonstrable, that the more you value, the more you value people and what people have to say, mm -hmm. the more you diminish your own importance in it. Absolutely. And prioritize your ears rather than your mouth. Yes. Yeah. Then you're going places. Well, lecturers are today taught to be facilitators. We yeah. facilitate uh, students in their learning. Uh, as filmmakers, what we're doing is facilitating people to tell their sto their stories and to share with the world what they've done, which I think is the most important thing. That's why I think documentary filmmaking yeah. is is very important and, and, and it needs to be kind of developed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently working on a, a film with some people in North Carolina called. Bleeding Pines Turpentine, and it's about oh their forest, yeah. Yeah. which was once 90 million acres, yeah. was decimated down to 600,000 mm -hmm. acres, mm -hmm. and they've now replenished it up to about uh, 3 million. Mm -hmm. But there was communities set up that lived on sort of tapping the turpentine, mm -hmm. who, who had to survive after the mm -hmm. American Civil War. The wood was used in to build ships at that point until they started mm -hmm. making the metal ones. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing other threats coming, and, and it's how these communities sort of bond together, mm -hmm. regardless of race or religion, all that kind of stuff, yeah. and how those communities were formed. And, and again, the stories that they tell, you also see their passions mm -hmm. when, when they're threatened by outside things mm -hmm. that could destroy their forest. Yeah, they you know? come together and they... Absolutely. They tell me how you deal with it. It's kind of a multidisciplined thing. You have within the one body, within the one head, yeah. My, my work is relatively si more simple because I'm going out and I'm doing a 10-minute nationwide piece, yeah. shoot it on the day, edit it on the day, that's the way it is, and you get there. But there's an enormous skill required to do the, the, the big documentary. Your brain must work at the level of visual images, must work at the level of sound, yeah. must work at the level of timeline, how Absolutely. it all comes together. And I, think, I think because, um, I mean, one of the difficulties with film uh, maybe what was difficult for you to, to understand when you, when you saw it as film is, is you just saw a couple of frames, the rest of it was all reeled up. Yes. Um, <coughs> but as editors, we began to see it as timelines. And I think the new technology, the likes of Final Cut Pro and Avid yeah. uh, and Premiere, uh, which are about 20 years old, some of these yeah. packages now, they, they show you a timeline yeah. and you start so to piece unreal, things together. They unreal, they unreal the whole thing. They don't give it to you there. And that makes it easier for you to actually yeah. see where things are. Um, but there is a lot, there's a lot of planning goes in. I, uh, you know, you, the current documentary has taken two years to work on. It's, yes. it's a 90-minute feature yes. documentary. Yes. And what you're trying to do is to, is to find people that tell their stories in, in five, six-minute chunks and then try mm. and work out how to edit those things mm. together. To, and to how to cover it. And how to cover it. I mean, th there, there are several processes. The first process is to make sure you've got the story that's being mm. told and then to work out that you've got the coverage to go over mm. the top of the general views and everything. We're, that's the process that we've, mm. we've spent the last year trying to get. Mm -hmm. The interviews were cut really 
a year ago, but it's, mm. it's getting the guys that are out on the field to go out mm. there and shoot the material that mm. I want them to have Absolutely. for yeah. the you know. So your lads are, <coughs> you're, they're, they're actually making stuff over there on an ongoing basis. They are, they are making yeah. stuff, yeah. I, I, s I use the term lads generically, girls as well. Girls as well, yeah. And uh, wh wh when will you enroll again for the next uh, semester? Um, well, we're, we're interviewing people at the moment, um, and I think uh, we, we normally get about uh, 20 students for yeah. the level three courses, uh -huh. extended diploma. Uh, we're also interviewing for the HND courses in Banbridge and you know, mm -hmm. Lurgan. Um, and we'll be making our final decisions towards the middle to end of August mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on the who gets on to the, the HND yes. courses. Yes, um, yes. And, and in recent years, it's become very competitive. We're, we're getting yes. some strong students wanting to come onto the course. Yes. Um, so, so it, it, you know, there is this quite an appeal. Um, one of the biggest worries that most people have is, well, where would I get work? Where mm. will work come from? Of course, from? of course. Um, students are multidisciplined. Mm. They, they, they have to, they might do camera work one day, sound another day, they might write scripts some other day, they might come out and do pre-production work or production yes. work. So you have to be multi-skilled to, to, to be able to generate the income that you actually need. Mm. Sometimes you have to go off and work, you know, uh, somewhere else. Um, but that's the time that you use that as research. So it's research techniques that we're trying to teach the students. Learning about business. You know, how does a business work? How does this business compare to the business that mm. I'm trying to do? So we're all trying to show them how to generate those kind mm. of skills. So um, that, that's really what we're, we're trying to do. George, I, I wish you good luck with it. And uh, that's the Southern <coughs> Regional College uh, over there on uh, Patrick Street in Newry. Uh, you're on the West Campus, a beautiful campus. Yeah. It's like the Starship Enterprise when you go in there and see the reception area. And uh, so if you guys are interested, uh, there'll be a warm reception over there for you. If there's nobody there, find out when they'll be there. They're maybe going on holidays now, we'll break starting to wrap, wrap yeah. up. But it'll all come good, and yeah. you'll be back again. We're going to keep in touch. You'll yes. do things with us. Yes. We look forward to being a showcase Absolutely. for the work of your students. Go well, George. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much yeah. And Sean, the young man taught by George uh, at Newry Institute oh, about 15 years ago, Sean, was it? Uh, <laughs> we'll have some music, please, sir. <laughs>